everybody. Um, we'll start with a brief opening statement from the head coach and then open it up for questions. Once you do, please get your attention to the mic holders and you can the benefit of our cameras. Great. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Um, you know, first of all, uh, I want to say thank you to our students. That was awesome to see the class of 2020 here tonight. I hope they had fun, and uh, obviously the rest of our students, too. But for the first time to have uh, that class in the building was a lot of fun. You could definitely ch see the change in the atmosphere. And uh, I, I know there will be no midterms next week, so I expect them to be here very early and uh, ready to rock against an outstanding opponent. But... Uh, solid team win. You know, we went in to the game knowing it was going to be a hard-fought battle, um, especially based on uh, our experiences a year ago down in Durham. And uh, we, we got exactly what we, we thought we were going to get. Uh, I thought our defense had a really good plan. Uh, I thought we tackled better tonight, except for a few plays. And, uh, you know, really proud of those young guys in the secondary. They thought they stepped up. I, I think they uh, they were assaulted. They were attacked again. And uh, I thought they stepped up and played very well. And, you know, obviously to, to, to hold a team to 13 points and really you know, outside of that last drive, I thought it was, was pretty solid. I like the way our offense responded in the second half. I believe we were across the 50 the entire first half. Uh, and only to have seven points is kind of like being in a baseball game and having too many runners left on base. You know, you just get a little bit uneasy uh, with having that much movement of the ball and not enough points on the board. Uh, but I thought we responded pretty well. Uh, I think they threw every blitz ever known to man uh, at us. And there were a lot of things and opportunities that we missed that we didn't take advantage of. But we'll obviously learn from that and get better. And, uh, you know, I thought from a kicking game standpoint, uh, the, you know, Duke has historically been the best, if not one of the best in the ACC. Uh, and I haven't looked at all the stats tonight, but, but I think we, uh, we held our own pretty well. So, uh, like I said, great team win. Uh, it goes back to the way we prepared last week. We had our best week of preparation, so the credit goes first and foremost to the guys. You know, they did a terrific job getting themselves ready. So now a new challenge this week with school starting on Tuesday, uh, but they'll be fine. They'll handle that well. And, and I'm very, very happy for our staff. You know, it's... It's the all-time winning of staff in Northwestern history. We had a couple of tough losses, and, uh, you know, obviously people are going to take shots at them. I think they shut the noise off pretty well and responded pretty well. So we'll have to continue to do that if we don't coach well enough, and I get that. That's what you do when you coach at this level. And uh, But I thought they had a great week. I thought their attitude stayed very positive. I thought they stayed upbeat and coached the heck out of the guys all week. So with that, how about some questions, please? A lot of changes up front in the depth chart. You move C.J. Robbins outside. Um, what did you see out of those guys? It seemed much improved on the running defense and just overall getting pressure as well. Yeah, we made that move a week ago uh, for the ISU game. I made it late in the week, and so I do release a depth chart for, for the record. All right, so uh, I'm just not going to cordially update it uh, every time we make changes. So... Um, you know, we just we felt like we had changed the rotation. We didn't like what we had from a standpoint, number one, obviously, of third down production in the opener. Second of all, we did not do a very good job uh, at, at all from a standpoint of rotating enough guys, not just the front, the entire defense in, in, in that situation. And I thought, you know, from being on the field, however many minutes it was, close to 40 in the opener, we, we just didn't have enough guys play to keep ourselves fresh in the fourth quarter, and it cost us. So that was the, the reasoning and the rationale behind that move. And obviously then the guys have got to go out and embrace it. And I'm really proud of CJ. I mean, he, he's not, he doesn't have captain after his name right now, but he's a captain. I mean, he, he's a great emotional leader. He's a great physical leader. Uh, he's been through a lot of battles. Uh, his sixth year here now. Uh, he's been through a lot uh, from just an amazing family, you know, from down in, in LaSalle, you know, went to LaSalle, Peru. So just really, really proud of CJ. And, and uh, you know, I think he's done a good job leading that group. How do you evaluate Clayton tonight? Obviously took a bunch of hits, had a lot of highlight throws. Yep. Also, I mean, 21 incompletions. What all do you think? Well, like I said, I think he, he saw just about every pressure he's going to see in his career. Um, you know, so I, a couple of things. We, we've got to do a better job helping him, you know, and, I, and I'm not just saying coaching-wise. I'm also saying production-wise on the outside. We had some, some route running that w we've got to get cleaned up that didn't help him. Uh, but, you know, he's won 11 games as a starter, and uh, I thought he hung in there pretty well with the amount of heat that we got.
Coach, Austin Carr has gone from a guy that, you know, came here as a walk-on, and he's really now developed into that true number one, not only as a safety blanket, but we even saw can stretch the field, mm -hmm. a guy that can convert on third down. What has he meant not only for Clayton but your offense as a whole? Well, first of all, Austin is just an incredibly special young man. Um, you know, off the field, you know, he's, he's a rock star. I mean, he's... Uh, I don't know. I think he speaks five languages. He can play the piano. He can sing. He was an actor in high school. He's devout in his faith. He, he, he walks the talk. I mean, he's just a really special guy. He just exudes success. I mean, everything about him uh, it just points to just a, a great future. Um, but no one in our program is surprised. And I think with the respect level that our players have is probably why he was given the responsibility of being a captain. Um, you know, and, and to see how he's embraced that role and a little bit out of his comfort zone. He's as gregarious as he is and, and as uh, well-rounded as he is. Uh, you know, he hasn't really been a guy that's, you know, kind of gone uh, and, and said a whole lot. He's just kind of gone and played. And so, you know, when you become a captain, you don't have that choice. You've got to get out of your comfort zone. And I think he's done a really good job with that. And I think that shows where he'll go in the future. I mean, this is a guy who's going to be, you know, running companies or could be the president. I mean, he's he's that type of person and to see him have success on the field. You know, I'm just somebody asked me, it might have been Ted after on WGN after I'm just honored to be his coach. I mean, it's it's a, it's it's truly an honor to coach young men like Austin and, and uh, to have that opportunity is something special. How crucial was it for the opening drive to set the tone for the rest of the game after last week? Yeah, you know, we still, we we always talk about starting fast. I, I think it was it was really important uh, to get things going the right way. I think from a confidence standpoint, uh, and um, you know, I, I thought the guys again. It, it goes back to the way that we prepared, and again, the credit goes to our players, most importantly, and, and to the staff. I thought we, I thought we responded really well from a couple of tough, tough, tough losses that we. We, you know, and again, I don't want to discredit ISU and I don't want to discredit Western at all because people always do that when we beat them. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. But we had so many opportunities to win those games, but we didn't. And you have to learn from them. And you can't feel sorry for yourself. You just got to keep grinding and get work to get better. And, um, you know, obviously I'd like to have a record in another place, but you are what your record is and you better embrace it and do something about it. And I thought our guys did this week. So starting fast was really important. Coach, uh, the defense tonight seemed to play a lot better in the second half. Uh, given all the injuries in the secondary so far, uh, what were the adjustments that you guys made at halftime? Um, not very many, quite frankly. Um, there were a couple of plays that we didn't fit very well in the first half, uh, and, and so we wanted to get those things cleaned up. Uh, we, we talked about just making a couple of little tweaks, but nothing, I mean, quite frankly, we had to adjust a lot more in the last two games. Uh, prior to this because they were both openers. You know, we, we, we didn't know what we were going to get from the Redbirds just because of their opening game and obviously had no idea what you're going to get from Western. So, um, uh, you know, I thought the defense just had a really good plan, but I thought the guys played really hard. You know, I think when you make a team one-dimensional and we did a pretty good job stopping a run today, um, you know, without, without really having a whole lot of pressure involved, uh, uh, when we can do that, I think we got a chance to be pretty good. Uh, so, Coach, you mentioned a couple of times um, all the different blitzes, the pressures that, uh, yeah. that Duke was bringing. Do you think that's something that, that you as a staff could have maybe game planned better for, or did it really just come down more to execution out in the field today? I'm not sure what your question is. What do you mean? Uh, game it's plan? something that you expected, yeah. um, all the different pressures. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no. Oh, yeah. No, he expected them to bring pressure, and, you know, they're going to bring one more than we have, then you got to make them pay. And, I mean, how many times it was, were balls just slightly overthrown, right? Or how many times we... You know, just barely miss those types of throws. Uh, there's a ton of things that we can do better as a staff. That's why we get paid to do what we do. And, and uh, you know, we've always got to be critical of ourselves first and foremost. And so, you know, we'll take a look at it tonight. And I thought we adjusted fairly decent. Um, but uh, then all of a sudden here came in something new. So credit Duke. And, you know, and I should have started it off. I mean, I've got so much respect for Coach Cutcliffe and his staff. Um, He's a first-class man, and he's a first-class coach, and, and that's a team that's won a lot of football games under his guidance, and uh, they're going to win a lot of games this year in the ACC. I just think the way that we finished, finished the game today gave us an opportunity to win. Coach, through the first couple of games, you guys have been on offense, have taken some deep shots, but haven't been able to hit them. Um, and then today, obviously, the three long touchdowns. Mm -hmm. How important was it to finally start getting those, that deep ball working for the offense? Well, it's critically important. You know, I, I, I mean, I don't think I'm going to give away game plan secrets tonight. I mean, we've been trying to throw the ball down the field more. Um, and we've got to make people pay for putting 25 people in the box. 
And if, if we can continue to do that, we're going to finally get some people to, to play off us a little bit, and then we'll have some balance. Uh, but I don't think any one of the three, our first three opponents have hid, this, hid their game plan. I think they've said, we're going to blitz everything at you, stop your run, and make Clayton and the receivers beat, you know, beat them. And, uh, you know, obviously today we had enough success in that area. Uh, but I don't think that that game plan is going to change until we show that we can handle it. So we got a lot of a lot of work to do as coaching staff to make sure we give our guys a great plan. Coach, with all the injuries in the secondary, what did it mean to you to see the healthy veterans like Anthony and Godwin step up and play well and get some clutch turnovers? Yeah, you know, I, I you know, Anthony dealt with some injury stuff in camp and he missed about two weeks. So he's finally getting back into, I think, game shape. Um, and, and I think that that's starting to show. Uh, and then, you know, Godwin, I, I think, has played well. I just think he's tried, again, you know, put yourself in his situation. You know, he goes from being kind of the dean of the secondary with Matt, a guy that he can trust, and, and, and Keith, who's played a lot. And then, you know, Kyle, he, he and Kyle are close. And now a whole other cast of guys out there with him. And I think he's handled it very, very well. But he's had a lot on his plate. And I think he's handled it extremely, extremely well. And, you know, great to see him have a great game tonight. Almost had another pick. That would have been sweet. you weren't in there for long but after the game did you sense like a kind of a weight off your shoulders to pick up that win and kind of come back and sing the fight song yeah, yeah no I think I saw a bunch of guys that celebrated their runs off I mean I, I think they've had uh, two tough games that I think we all know as a program that we could have done better in but we didn't and I think it just shows if you have perseverance and some grit and you, you stay the course that you can do whatever it is that you set your mind to. And I think the other way around, I think they were proud of the way that they responded. And I think they were proud of the way that they prepared. And I think they were proud of the way that they won. And, uh, you know, as I told them, as always after we win, I expect them to have good, clean American fun. But this is one win. And, you know, now everybody's back to undefeated. I mean, you can say what you want, but everybody's undefeated in Big Ten play. And uh, the records start over for a reason. And we've got a great opponent coming in here next week. So uh, watch a lot of football today. I think it comes back to who doesn't beat themselves. It's typically who ends up winning the game. And I uh, saw a lot of teams beat themselves today. Like I watched us beat ourselves for two weeks. So, you know, hopefully we can t continue to improve and get better. Teddy, did you have one? Did you have one? Oh, all right. I, need a player. I can answer anything you want for Clayton. Hey, by the way, before I go, happy birthday to my son, Ryan. Where you at, Ryan? All right, this Tuesday, he's turning 10 years old. So happy birthday, little buddy. All right, go Cats. Thanks.
Mike two check, check check one two three. Mike two check one two three four five. Microphone Northwestern check one two three four five seven.
Good. I get two for one here. I wanted to uh, ask you both about the uh, touchdown play, 26 yard or whatever it was. You go first. Um, you know, we just knew what coverage going in that they were going to play to our open set. And, uh, you know, just like we executed uh, in, during the week, you know, it worked out perfectly. You know, Clayton hit me right on throw. Perfect ball. Yeah, you just beat him. Um, I mean, you see, he winds him. He widens him, and he just takes it right up the seam. So it was a nice, nice play by Garrett uh, against man coverage. And how much? I mean, considering the struggles with offense, how much did that play mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it meant a lot. Um, but I mean, it was, it was just the first drive of the game, and uh, and you know. Uh, it, was, it was Garrett's first touchdown catch, so that was huge. Um, that was fun for us. But uh, but I think um, you know when we get in that situation more, we gotta we gotta capitalize more when we get down there. Uh, it can't just be the first drive of the game. I think we do a pretty good job of scoring that first drive of the game. But uh, we we gotta finish better, and I think that's something we're learning tonight. For Clayton, so you had you know three beautiful touchdown passes tonight, but also probably some throws that you would have liked to have back. Um, I know you haven't watched tape or anything yet, but just coming out out of this game, um, what's like the one thing you think he could have done better? Yeah, I think I could have stayed in there a little bit, and um, you know I was throwing off my back foot a few times where I didn't have to. Um, I think I got to stay in there, maybe take a hit, but um, complete some of those balls, and um, you know that one to Austin finally did that. Um, but but I got I got to do the better job of that. Clayton, how big was it to finally get um, some of those deep passes going after the first couple weeks trying to do that and not being as successful, and then finally tonight getting those three long touchdowns? I think that was huge, uh, especially for our offense. You know, I think that's something in the passing game we didn't have a year ago is those explosive plays, and that's something we've worked hard on. And um, credit those receivers getting open. Um, you know, those as a good group of defensive backs, we just played right there, and uh, they did a great job against them. And um, yeah, it's a good stepping stone for us. Garrett, did you go into the game knowing you were going to be a big part of the offense? Um, you know, I kind of just go into every game, you know, thinking that I need to step up and uh, make an impact for our offense. You know, every week we kind of game plan, and, you know, I hope that I'm going to be a big part in the offense. Uh, but, you know, nothing specifically this week. That Anything specific on film that let you know that you were going to have a pretty good night? No, not necessarily. And then after number 33 clocked Austin, you went up and had a little conversation with him. What did you say to him? Uh, you know, just sticking up for my guys. You know, uh, we're a team. You know, I can't let somebody go out there and hit my boy like uh, like that. So, you know, I just had a couple choice words for him. You know, uh, some things that I won't say right now. But, um, you know, just trying to stick up for my man, Austin. Did he say anything back to you? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> not really. Garrett, speaking of sticking up for your boy, uh, Clayton took five sacks and it seemed like got hit three times that you know three times as often what are you guys trying to do now to protect him and um and after garrett answers clayton if you can address that too um well going in we knew that they were going to bring a lot of pressure uh and man up on the outside so you know try to do some things protection wise to you know make sure we could protect protect clayton as uh, as well as we could uh you know obviously it didn't work out you know a couple plays as well as we have, would have liked it to but, uh, you know, we're really just trying to sit in there and protect Clayton so, you know, he can sit in the pocket and deliver those passes. What kind of toughness <coughs> is he showing you guys? I'm sorry? What kind of toughness is he showing you guys? Um, you know, he's showing great toughness, you know, because it's hard to sit in there when, you know, you got seven guys blocking but eight guys coming. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's hard to sit in there and know that you're going to get hit and, you know, still deliver the ball. So, you know, he's showed great toughness, and, you know, we're really proud of him, especially tonight he had a great game. So, uh, you know, he's just really showing us a lot. Hits, uh, stun you. Seems like you bounced up every time. No, I mean, I got hit before. Hit, got hit harder than that, but yeah, I'm good. Uh, Garrett, um, in this game, even though the passing game was working um, whenever Clayton really had time to throw, um, seemed to have a little trouble getting the running game working efficiently. Is there anything you think you can do this week in practice to make sure that uh, Justin and um, Austin can get more room to work with? Um, you know, it's just going back to work. You know, we know we have a big opponent coming up in Nebraska, and, uh, you know, we got to take him seriously as we do every opponent. We just know that we got to get back to basis. You know, running the ball is something that we hang our hat on uh, without a doubt. So, you know, we just got to go back to work and, you know, get ready for Nebraska coming up. 
Garrett, you guys lost Dan Vitale over the offseason and then Jamie and Camp as well. Um, was there, did you feel like any weight on your shoulder to step up, especially going into your third year here? And any anyone in particular that helped you, anything that you've worked on with Clayton, uh, anything of that nature? Um, I knew that I was going to have to be a pretty vital part of the offense. You know, our super back is always a very big part of our offense. And, you know, if I knew if I was going to be the starter, you know, I needed to step up and, you know, go out there and make some plays. So, you know, since spring ball, Clayton and I were really on it, you know, trying to be on the same page, you know, watching film together, talking constantly about, you know, this route or that route and, you know, just trying to be on the same page so we could uh, get to the season and, you know, I would be able to be productive and he and I would be on the same page. Any further questions for Clayton and Garrett? All right, thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Hey, Anthony, we'd be remiss if we did not ask. Um, Fitz said that you had missed a couple weeks in training camp and you're now just uh, rounding into football shape. Is that about right? Uh, sounds about right. Um, yeah, kind of uh, got nick nicked up my knee a little bit in camp, but, um, you know, I missed a few reps, but I was able to get back and just starting to get, you know, really back in shape and, you know, get them reps back and, you know, just, you know, you never get, get that, you know, game rep experience from camp, but, you know, the closest thing to it is, you know, practicing in camp, and I was I missed a few days, so, you know, just to get back into it, it feels really good. I assume it was frustrating, you know, school built for the whole campaign around you, and you're trying to do big things in the first couple games, and, and it wasn't quite there. What was that experience like? Oh, uh, I mean, 
It was more so bad that we were losing. <laughs> um, I, I at the end of the day, man, stats, you know, I can have one tackle, zero tackles, and we win, I'll be fine. But, um, you know, definitely just want to come out with a W, and I was excited that we came out with one today, and uh, that's all that matters. How do you evaluate the, the defense as a whole's performance tonight? <clears throat> I felt like we were able to make some plays, you know, that we left out there uh, the last two games, which all along, you know, I knew we had it in. Um, I think we focused on this time, just, you know, just letting loose, you know, giving everything we got, playing with passion, having fun again. You know, we had a lot of fun, you know, through camp, uh, off season. You know, we kind of get away from that. I think when we have fun, when we're relaxed, when we're playing our game, uh, that's when we're at our best. So, I mean, I thought we played great today. Godwin, it must just have felt like people were just going down all around you in the secondary the past couple of weeks. Um, how Was there like a message you had as a senior leader to those guys? You know, Trey Williams making his first start, and even Montre, still young guys. Did you have any <laughs> message to them? Did you, you have anything that you tried to rally them around? I mean... Obviously, I have faith in them, you know, great players. Um, I think yeah, I went back to when I was a redshirt freshman making my first start. And I remember Coach Brown telling me, you know, it's just football. You know, it's nothing. You've been doing this all your life. And that's kind of the message I have for the young boys. Like, it's just football. You, you have the talent. You know, you're here for a reason. You've been grinding with us this whole time. You haven't had that time to shine, but now you're here. It's just football. Relax, go out there, play how you, play how you know you can, and have fun. And that's exactly what they did. Very proud of them. Um, Godwin, can you take us to the uh, interception play? Uh, it's actually funny. We uh, they had, we ran that play in practice. You know, it comes down to preparation. Once again, they ran we ran that play in practice. Scout team did a hell of a job all week, and um, you know, when that exact play came down, let him go a little you know inside of me, came underneath it, came up, didn't intercept it in practice. But I, I remember the coaches trying to get on me. They're like, don't let him, don't let him get inside of you too fast. But, you know, Ant was like, nah, bro. I got the inside. You do what you do. And that's like what I did in the game. Came down to it. I, you know, I knew it was coming. Ran underneath it. And, mwah. Um, <laughs> please check AKA Godwin on Twitter. He tweeted before the game. Thanks for the INT. And uh, he said God gave him a, a, a just some, he told, God told him to tweet it if he, if he believes in him. And it happened. Yeah, it's the honest it's truth, I'm telling you. So you can check it right now. I'm telling you, it's on there. Three hours ago, I'm telling you. <laughs> All right. It's been a long time, but I, I knew it. I was feeling it. He told me, man. Uh, similar question for Anthony. Can you take us through the fumble recovery and what you saw on that play? Uh, um, a horrible play by me, honestly. Um, I kind of came too far up the field, and um, the, I, had, I gave the quarterback an inside lane, but I was able to get my hand on the ball and uh, you know, kind of make a big play for our team. And um, it was a g great momentum shift for us. And... Um, yeah, just happy to be, be there to make it for my team. So, Godwin, did you envision that? <laughs> Had, what, what compelled you to, to tweet that out before the game? I mean, <laughs> I was, you know, I was, I was in the room, you know, you know, praying, talking, talking to God. And he was, you know, he was telling me, like, you know, you're going to get an interception today. It's been a while. As you guys know, it's been a long time. And I was like, you know, it's been too long. I'm not going to. He was like, if you believe it, you know, go ahead and tweet it. And I was like, nah, I'm not, I'm not about to look like a fool. If I don't have an interception, I'm going to get cheesed. Everybody's going to make fun of me. I was like, nah, you know what? You know, I had faith and I believed. I had that family, man. Went ahead and tweeted it. God made it happen. And now I'm right here. We paying attention to your feet. <laughs> <laughs> So that's one more. I mean, you can't get rid of the two losses, but but you head into Big Tens. Does it feel like a clean slate, or you know you're one and two? How does it? Uh, it's a lot better than zero and three. So we'll take one and two right now. Um, going into Big Ten play, it's going to be it's going to be a battle. I mean, as you can see, anybody can win on any Saturday, as you can see from the games that happened today. And um, we we have to bring our A game every day now. It's the Big Ten play. It's what we came here to play. You know, we came here to play in the Big Ten, play big time football, and and it starts right now. I agree. I mean, some huge games ahead of us, you know, coming with momentum after this game. You know, I mean, obviously the last last two games were very close as well. Didn't have a chance to finish them, but very, you know, believe uh, deeply in this team. And I know we have the talent to go ahead and uh, finish the season very, very strong. 
Uh, guys, especially with the freshmen all, all here today, crowd a lot bigger than it was in the previous two weeks. How big is that for a defensive unit to help uh, to either disrupt the offense or just give you guys more energy? Um, they were, the crowd was rocking tonight, and we really appreciated it. Um, we're able to get a, I mean, I think we had a few false start penalties on them, and, you know, uh, we got to give that to the crowd as well. And uh, just, uh, you know, the excitement in the build for the game tonight, uh, it, I mean, they were, it was the best, the best it's ever been. So I was really happy for them, happy to have them. Keep coming. Keep coming. All you guys, I mean, it, it's awesome, you know, having that crowd there, you know. You can, obviously, you win, and it makes it a little easier for people to come to the games. So. Got to win today. Hopefully, you know, keep keep it coming. Change kind of kind of. We want to change the culture, you know, Northwestern. Obviously, in the past, we haven't had the best crowds, but you know, I, I think since I've been here, even it's gotten bigger and bigger, and we want to keep winning and you know, keep giving them something to cheer about. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, gentlemen.